Okay, so today's transformation is the dilation. So the top of the page is, I'm just going to start reading that paragraph. A figure is dilated about a point called the center of dilation by a dilation factor or scale factor K. So in the picture to the right, this blue point is our center of dilation. If no point is mentioned, then the center of dilation is assumed to be the origin, whose coordinates are 0, 0. The center of dilation, a point, and its image are collinear. There's all three points on the same line. So let's take a look at the point, or to the diagram to the right to take a look at those points. So I already marked the center of dilation, and let's look at the enlargement, so the right side. So let's take a look at point B here, and then when you dilate point B, here's the image, B prime, which are all on the same line, okay? So if the scale factor K, the bullet, is between 0 and 1, so it's not equal to 1, and it's greater than 0, then the dilation is a reduction. The figures get smaller. And if it's greater than 1, then the dilation is an enlargement. Okay, if k equals 1, so if k equals 1, then the figures are congruent. You're not changing the size. So the scale factor less than 1, such as 1 half, 2 thirds, 0.875, that's a reduction, and if it's greater than 1, it's an enlargement. So in a dilation, the shape of the image is the same as the preimage. And this is because your angle measure is preserved. However, the size of the image is not the same. Okay, and this is because distance or length is not preserved. And this is the unit we just covered. Okay, if angle measures remain the same, but the side lengths are different or proportional, then the triangles are similar. So therefore, triangle ABC would be similar and not congruent. Because of this, because distance is not preserved, a dilation is not a rigid motion. Okay. So the mapping rule, okay, for dilations in the coordinate plane about the origin, so it's going to be different if the center of dilation is not the origin, given scale factor K, so dilation is known with a capital D, you multiply the scale factor times the X coordinate, and you multiply it times the Y coordinate. And let's take a look at the properties of a dilation. Well, we just mentioned above that angle measures remain the same. Sides that are parallel, say in a parallel or a rectangle, um, would remain parallel after you dilate. Distance is not preserved. Collinearity is preserved, so if points were on the same line to start, they remain on the same line. And let's use the diagram to the right for orientation. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, PQR, that's in a clockwise manner and PQR with the image is also. So orientation is preserved. Because distance is not preserved, that means area and perimeter are also not preserved. Okay, one other um, item that I want to mention here before we talk about how to find the scale factor is that when you dilate, so if I take segment PR and I dilate it and I'm looking at the image P prime, R prime, those two segments are parallel. 
Okay, we look at another side of the triangle, PQ, and its image, P prime, Q prime. Those two sides are parallel. And the same would remain true for side QR and Q prime, R prime. All right, now how to find the scale factor given the picture. Okay, you could simply, um, just like we were doing a similar triangle, so treat the triangle PQR, again, P prime, Q prime, R prime, look at those two triangles without the um, lines drawn for the dilation. You just take, so say this is 9 and 3, just take the side, um, the longer side, take the image, rather, because the image is the longer side, P prime, Q prime, R prime, and divide it by the pre-image, okay? So we take the image and divide it by the pre-image, okay? And we get a scale factor of 3. Okay, so that would be sides like P prime, Q prime, divide that by PQ. That would be the same as if you took um, Q prime, R prime, divided by QR, and the same as P prime, R prime, divided by PR. You take the image, divide it by the pre-image. You can also take a look at, let me grab a different color, the distance, um, the new point is away from the center of dilation. So if I say from here to here is 6, okay, and then this is 2, that would also be a scale factor of 3. So you can compare the distance from the center of dilation. So that would be taking C to R divided by, or C to R prime divided by C to R. So R prime being the image, okay? And then we know that um, in this case, CP times CK, that's coming from um, the C prime divided by CP equals K. So put that over 1. So CP times K equals CP prime. All right, let's take a look at the first example. If the coordinates of P are negative 3, negative 2, what are the coordinates of P prime, which is the image of P, under a dilation of 4? So we just multiply negative 3 times 4 and negative 2 times 4 to get P prime of negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 and negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So you take and multiply your coordinates by your scale factor. Under dilation, where the center of dilation is the origin, the image of A, uh, negative 2, negative 3, is A prime, negative 10, negative 15. What are the coordinates of B prime, the image of B, under the same dilation? Well, we first have to figure out how we went from A to A prime. So if I take negative 10, divided by negative 2, the two x coordinates, so the opposite of the multiplying division, we get 5. And the same would be if you divided negative 15, divided by negative 3, you get 5. So this, from A to A prime, is a dilation of 5. So applying that dilation of 5 to point B, so multiply this by 5, so 4 times 5, 0 times 5, we get B prime as 20, 0. And you may see the scale factor without dividing, okay? Find the constant or scale factor K for the dilation that maps negative 4, 6 onto uh, 12, negative 18. So again, all we have to do to show work is take our new x-coordinate of the image, so 12, and divide it by the x-coordinate of the pre-image and we get a scale factor of negative 3. And if you check, negative 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Find the scale factor here given the pictures. Um, so I'm going to let K 
equal the scale factor. So this question is looking at the distance from the center of dilation. Okay, so that would be equal to the distance to the image, so this distance here, which is 5, divided by the distance to the pre-image, 5 over 2, is equal to 5 halves, or 2.5. The decimal is okay. Okay? Um, and it's important to note, too, it, it's clear it's, and it's easy to see, but where is the image and where is the pre-image? This was an enlargement. Where the next one is a reduction. So, let's just make note, this is a reduction. This is an enlargement. And in this one, we're given the sides. Remember, you always want to take the image and divide it by the pre-image. And noting if you have an enlargement reduction, you know what the scale factor is going to have to be. Scale factor for an enlargement has to be greater than 1. A reduction has to be between 0 and 1. So I know I'm going to get a number less than 1, and we want to divide um, the 3 by the 9 to get 1 third. So 1 third is equal to K. And number 5. If the center of dilation is E, so I'm going to mark the point. State the scale factor. So again, it's the image over pre-image. So the image goes to F prime. And counting those boxes, it's 1, 2, 3. So we're going to take 3 and divide it by the distance to the original side, which is up to F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3 over 6 is 1 half. All right, number 6. Number 6 comes from a state assessment question. And I'm going to draw a picture to represent what's going on. So it says in triangle KLM, so I'm going to draw triangle KLM. The measure of angle K is 36. You should have the degree symbol. And the length of KM is 5. The transformation uh, dilation of 2 is performed. So I'm going to draw a triangle larger. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. K prime would be here, L prime, and M prime. Um, a dilation of 2 would mean this side we multiply by 2, so that's 10. And K prime would also remain the same because angle measure is preserved. Find the measure of angle K, justify your answer, or K prime. So we just found that, and we just found the length of K prime, M prime. So the measure of angle K is 36 degrees, and K prime, M prime is equal to 10. Justify your answer. Um, in this case, typically justify is math, but there's really no math to do other than the math for this one. So let's explain in words. Um, first thing we want to mention is a dilation is not a rigid motion. and explain that. So angle measure is preserved, but distance is not preserved. Hence, why the angles remain the same measure, but the sides did not. So a dilation produces an image similar to the pre-image and in similar triangles, corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides
are in proportion. All right, you may want to pause it so you can copy that all down. And number seven, this is also a state assessment question. It says when triangle ABC is dilated by a scale factor of two. So this tells us that our sim ratio is one to two. And its image is A prime, B prime, C prime. Which image is true? So it's saying that the length of AC is congruent to the length of its pre-image, or image. Excuse me, the pre-image and image are not congruent because distance is not preserved. So no, um, A prime, C prime would be double AC. So that's not true. Are the angles congruent? Yes. Okay. Are the perimeters congruent? Uh, no. Recall that the sim ratio equals the ratio of perimeters and the sim ratio squared equals the ratio of the areas. So we know that if we if it's a sim ratio of one to two we double the perimeter of triangle A, B, C to get the perimeter of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And then it's saying in four that we double the area of A, of a triangle A, B, C to get triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And that's not the case either because one to two squared is one to four. So this should be four times the area of ABC um, is equal to the area of A prime, B prime, C prime. So two is correct. And eight, eight is the, oh no, we have nine, and then we'll look at some constructions. If the perimeter of triangle PQR is 27 inches, what is the perimeter of triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime under a dilation of three? So dilation of three means our sim ratio is one to three. So this is just like the last unit. I'm going to compare small to large. So one to three equals, the ratio of perimeters is equal to the sim ratio. So the image, okay, is the larger under the dilation. So that's my x, 27 is up top. Cross multiply, we get x equals 81. So our perimeter is 81 inches. Number nine, the area of triangle CYP is 12 square inches. Find the area of its image, C prime, triangle C prime, Y prime, P prime, under the dilation of two. So that's our scale factor of one to two. So we square that. Again, we're finding the area of the image. So that's X is going to go in the denominator and the area of the pre-image up top. So one over two squared is one over four equals 12 over X and we get x equal to 48, so 48 square inches. All right, so some constructions. We have two. In 10, we're going to determine, so I'm going to move it all the way up so we can just see the triangles. In 10, we have to find the center of dilation that maps uh, triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. We don't need the compass for this. All you need is a straight edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line as we know that the center of dilation, a point in its image are all collinear. So we're going to draw a line from A through A prime and extend it as long as you can. We'll see how much room I don't have much room shown on the screen, so I don't know if I need to adjust mine. And then draw a line from B through B prime, extend it all the way through. And there's our center of dilation where they intersect. But I'm just going to verify that I have it correct. So when I draw a line from C through C prime, it should also go right through here, and it does. Okay? So I'm just going to add arrows. And here is the center of dilation. Just like the midpoint question at the beginning of the year, 
in addition to the point, it's always best to label it so it's clear to the person grading. And then 11 is um, using your compass. We'll need the compass for this one in the straight edge. And triangle DEF below. We're going to construct the image of triangle DEF under a dilation of 4. And this actually should state what the center is. So with, I'm going to say, center E. And when you're talking about a dilation in your explanation, you should always note the center. Okay, so here's the triangle. I may need to zoom out. But I'm first going to start by drawing those lines. So center dilation from E. And we're going to find its image. So extend it. I may need to extend further. And let's extend this one as far as I can. Now we need to get out the compass. Put your point on E. Bring it back, measure ED, because this side is going to be four times as long. So right here would be scale factor, whoops, can move it out a little bit, not too much. Let's try that again. No, still even a little bit more. Let's try that. That's better. Um, that's a scale factor of one. So there's one. Twice as long would be here, three times as long here, and I can fit four times as long. Good. Now I'm going to come down and measure E to F and do the same thing. So that's four times as long. That looks pretty good. So again, there's a K equal to one. Here's K equal to two and k equal to 3, and k equal to 4. All right, we can get rid of the compass. So I'm going to label this point up here. Here is, now I moved up um, the D. So here's my D prime. E is going to stay the same because that point of the triangle is the center of dilation. So that's invariant. It doesn't move. And then F moves out to here, so there's F prime. And we can, I'm going to take that line tool and just trace over my new triangle in blue. So the image is here. So they are overlapping. Okay. And I just want to point out again that those sides that aren't overlapping okay, is, are going to be parallel. The other sides, when you have the center of dilation on your figure, the other points are going to coincide with the sides of the original triangle So this, because the sides are overlapping. But those sides that are not overlapping are going to be parallel in a dilation.